It's Clue 5! Five! It's, can you believe it's the end of the month and we're almost wrapping this up? Well, I mean, people still have time to knit for the knit along, but I'm just saying this is the last clue. Yay, how exciting. So, so the, reveal. Yeah. the reveal. If you're just joining us, this is Amba O'Brien. Hi. Knitwear <laughs> pattern designer, and I'm Jana from Pearl Together. And yay! <laughs> you're going to show us. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Look so, at that lace lace bind lace section with the pico bind off. How lovely. So the kind of lace representing the trees and the, the greenery and the, the bush around the Caledonia flowers. Uh-huh. That's so and this is how you would wear it. This is how I like to wear it. So with that deep part at the front and uh -huh. dangled ends around. You can even, it's quite big, you could wrap it a couple of times if you wanted to have a coat over and have it all cozy up. Cozy up, or it's a great shape for wearing over the shoulders or it's back to front, inside out. Look at that. And that really shows off. Quite long yeah. ends. You could even tie those around if you want. Yeah, like yeah. Wear it with your summer frock. Yeah. yeah, we're headed we're headed into summer here in the states. Yep, that's and beautiful. Into winter for us, so this will be nice and cozy in winter. So yay, the mystery has been revealed. Yes, and so we'll have a technique video that follows our little introduction here that shows about the lace section and how you can go about that keeping track of where you are any troubleshooting that you know and then the pico bind off as well and then some you know and then you would block it as if you normally normally would yeah 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 so the lace it's not too complicated yeah it's a nice simple one so it's a good one for people who haven't done lace before this would be right. a good first lace yeah so don't be intimidated by the lace no it looks, it looks more complicated like the results and it are, is yeah. yeah usually lace is pretty logical too i think where you know you can tell how many yarn overs or holes there's supposed to be you can tell how many there are in a section and then you're going to have the corresponding decreases and you know or not yeah. to keep your because we're still increasing so you'll have to have a few extra to keep the shawl shape going mm, so you've got some nice pointy ends nice yeah and today um I'm also releasing two cow patterns. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people will find these added to their library. They would have pre-ordered them as part of the cow. So the reveal for the Caledonia cows. This is right. actually cow B. And wow, that's beautiful. Look at that. For mine, I used the leftover purple from uh -huh. the shawl so because I had the 100 gram skein I used the leftover mm -hmm. to make this and in the first video you might remember I said that initially I, I selected six colors from Tarina for the project and I ended up using two full skeins and two half skeins of those six colors so I used four colors so this has color one of that original set which is a much lighter variegated it's a bit uh -huh. hard to see. It's got a lot of like yellow and the purples in it. It's really pretty. You'll see it in the photo more clearly. So this is started in the same way as the shawl, the, the Caledonia shawl, worked flat back and forth, but in stocking it. And then just at the start of the bobble rounds, it's joined to work in the round okay. and it's finished up in the round. So Oh, it's neat. That's neat. This kind of shape, which sits nicely when wearing it. Oh, and then that's neat. Yeah. It's got the lace as well, the same lace. So it's bubbles and lace, like a little oh. cow version of the shawl that maybe you can use some of your leftovers. And then... I love that. Let me just say that I love that you always have patterns that help us use up the leftovers from whatever <laughs> big thing we already knit. Like with the Radvent 
you know, with the Advent stuff, you always have ways to knit up the little bits that are left. I think that's lovely. Yeah, I love using up all those bits because they're such yeah. beautiful yarn. You want to make the most of it. And then this is Cowl A. Wow. It's longer and it incorporates a stranded knitting colour work motif. Uh-huh. And this was originally what I had planned for the shawl. And um, in my original design of the shawl, I knit two versions with this colour work motif and I just couldn't get it to work in the way I wanted to. So I ended up scratching it, going with mosaic and doing a mosaic version of that colour work, which is much easier for everyone and works better on a flat. Like knitting stranded colour work in the round is pretty difficult. And this has a lot of long floats. So it was just really a tension issue. It was getting too, pulling the shawl out of shape. It wasn't working. So then I decided I would do an in the round version, which is when I decided to create the cow. So it's the same shape as cow B mm -hmm. and also incorporates the bobbles and the lace of the Caledonia shawl and then has this colour work, the stranded colour work. So you can choose if you don't want to do stranded colour work, you can do right. this. Version. This one does use, off the top of my head, it's more like a full skein of the green. So right. I did have an extra skein of the green. So because this shawl also uses a full skein of the green for the lace. So, and then I used the leftover of this skein for the lighter colour work. So right. I think it's about half a skein, but I'd have to double check that. So, so roughly yeah. 200 grams for the lighter one. Okay. So for cowl A, which is this one with the colour work, you will need 324 grams for the green, yards for the green. So it's not a full 100 gram skein, 324 yards, or yep. that's nearly 300 metres. And then for the lighter contrast colour, mm -hmm. you'll need, um, where have I got that? 168 yards. So it is under, two, so it's under 50 grams for that. And that's about 155 meters. So, yeah. Nice. A light color where it's the dark green and a dark color where it's, you know, so you can mix it. Oh, yeah. Have a different effect. That yeah, way. if you wanted to reverse the colors, sure. So, yeah, inspired by the spider orchid, the Caledonia. <laughs> that's lovely. So now I've got a very coordinating. You do. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking how that's so interesting because when you were designing that, you kind of had to switch gears because the stranded color work, knitting it back and forth flat wasn't working out quite how you wanted to. So you switch gears. And even though that was maybe frustrating from a design standpoint for you, but look at the beautiful cowl that came from that, that maybe you wouldn't have done the cowl otherwise, right? Yeah. Maybe Maybe you wouldn't have, had it worked out originally back and forth flat, you may not have designed the cowl. So, so now there's three patterns that you came up with instead of the original one, just one. So I think that's lovely. I particularly like that bobble with the lace. I really like yeah, that. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. That's really cute. Yeah. yeah. So that's fantastic. So how can people get the, the two cowl patterns? That was was tell us about that was that a bonus thing if people purchased the original mystery knit along it, it it was so it was a bonus until the release so until today um so those who participated in the cowl and bought the, the shawl pattern will have had the option to include the cowl up until today basically <laughs> so sorry if you've okay caught this at the end um so yeah it's a free bonus for cap for mcal participants either through payhip where i've been offering the pattern for sale there and on ravelry so from today i will offer the cow separately on ravelry you'll be able to get it okay. there and also add it to my etsy store okay. i did, i use payhip instead of etsy for the mystery needle along because Etsy won't allow me to upload clues and right 
I see. Yeah, yeah so, to add on to the clues in the same way that you can update Ravelry library patterns. Yeah, and pay right. hip. And pay hip. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so that's why it wasn't. It was good to try out PayHip too. I haven't used that platform, so yeah. it's good yeah. to see how that works. So we'll put the links to everything down below. Yeah. So that's fantastic. I hope everybody's really enjoyed the, you know, the the videos and the clues. And we're looking forward to seeing everyone's finished objects. You'll have a finished object thread over in your groups, as will I. And it's been a lot yeah. of fun. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. So thanks for allowing me to be part of your mystery knit along. It's been great. Well, thank you for being part of it. It's been exciting yeah, and teaming up with fun. Tarina as well. The Ab yeah, absolutely. And as always in all the video descriptions, we'll put links to her shop as well. And I'm sure she'd be happy to dye more kits if the demand is there. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. It's been a lot of fun. See you in the groups. See you. All right, clue five is all about the lace and this section is lovely. So it's super interesting the way we have these kind of almost like seashell half moons. Um, well, I guess if you turn it around when you're wearing the shawl, they would be more like smiles or anyhow. Um, but what I wanted to do is knit through a couple of repeats and then so you could see what to expect and see what this is going to look like and how by decreasing several rows and then increasing to get the stitch count back correct that makes these shapes so that's pretty neat and then you want to take notice of these columns here this is where you're going to do the central double decrease so you want to take notice that those keep lining up so i'll show you how to keep track of that so what i've done here is knitted through the chart or the written instructions uh rows one through 14 and that would be equal to two of these ridges so if you'll notice on the chart for example you'll see a whole line of pearl bumps that's this ridge right here and this ridge right here so this on the chart is row 14 and then you knit through rows 7 through 14 three more times so i've done it once and i need to do it two more times but i wanted to to get established so you can see what to expect and see what it's going to look like all right let's get into the techniques of this and we'll show you first how to do the central double decrease all right since i am at the part where i'm repeating rows 7 through 14 three more times this is actually row 9 when i first come up to the first time i'm going to perform a central double decrease but you're going to do this right away on row 1 so what happens is you'll want to, you know, knit one, do your knit front back, and then knit however many stitches across, that is. Then you're going to slip the next two as if to knit. So that means you're just going to go in as if to knit, slip the next two off together. Now that's important to do them together because the whole thing will look different if you do them one at a time. It changes the positions. You see that? So slip them off together. Then you'll knit the next stitch. And then put your left needle up underneath the base of those two stitches that you slip together and bring them over the top in a similar way to when you do the bind off. Now I just give this a little tug and kind of straighten everything out and you'll notice that makes a really nice line or it makes it, it lays flat on top and then that's what creates this column here. Okay, and it won't look that way if you don't slip them, the two together knitwise. So I'll show you that again in just a moment. Um, I'm just going to knit several more until I get to the next section where I'm going to do that. And one thing you can tell, I mean, I know that I'm supposed to do nine in between the central double decreases here, but I also know that if I'm not counting or if I get distracted, that I'm going to come up on these and it's going to be one stitch before that column I showed you. Okay, so this should be it right here. So you see the column? It should be one stitch before the column. I'm going to slip those two knitwise together knit the next stitch, take my left needle under the base of those two, grab them and pull them over the top. And then I just give that a little tug to straighten everything out. Make sure this is nice and loose. You don't want things to be super tight. And then carry on with the prescribed number of stitches until you come to that symbol again. If you're, symbol if you're using the chart or in the written instructions, either way. Okay, so some things to look at. I'll show you how to tink a central double decrease. If you find that you've placed one in the wrong, wrong place and you need to take one back out, let me do this next one and I'll show you how you would go about taking that out if you need to. All right, let's say I'm going along and I realize that my stitch count is off and I have not put that one in the right place. So I'm gonna tink back, 
just meaning unknit, going back, and I come here. And you're thinking, well, you could pinch this. You could just pinch this and let it go and then pick up your stitches. You absolutely could do that. But you know the last thing we did was take those two up over the top. So I'm just going to go in the side here, and I'm going to grab those two and take them back up over the top like I did before. And then here's the stitch we knitted. You can see that. Okay, take that one out and then put these two back on the left side. There you go. So I hope that makes sense. You literally just reverse everything you just did to create the central double decrease. Okay, I hope that helps and you get on your way successfully. Um, let's see, the only other tips I had for this section was just making sure you're counting carefully. This is just a, a section where you just really wanna pay attention so you don't end up doing a whole lot of tinking. So again, I can tell that I'm, here's my column. I'm one stitch before the column and that's where I need to know, even if I wasn't counting. But for me, it's the row that I'm on, it's nine stitches between because it's four knit stitches up to the central double decrease and then five afterward. That's what's inside that that chart repeat box or between the brackets if you're doing the written instructions. All right, the other tip I have for you is applies to either row six or row 13. And this is where you have all those yarn overs in a row. So you can see where we've done our central double decrease here. And then there is actually a total of six yarn overs and knits between six sets of those things. So what I mean by that is you see at the beginning of the parentheses or the bracket repeats on the chart, you have you have beginning with three. So that's one yarn over, two yarn overs, three yarn overs. Then you have your central double decrease and then you have three more of those. One, two, three, and a knit stitch to end that section. But if you look total, the number between the central double decreases is six yarn overs and five knits. So what I do is I, after I complete the central double decrease, I count one yarn over, two, three, four, five, six yarn overs, then I do that, and then I carry on. So rather than counting the knit stitches, I count the yarn overs, and I do that all the way across until I get to, you know, I don't know, what if it's 12 or 15 stitches toward the end, and then I go back to paying attention to the chart. But I know what's going on for now, so it's quicker to just keep going and do that six. So that's one, two, three, four, I count the yarn overs, not the knits, five, and then six. And I know that I'm one stitch before that column, so that works out really well. One stitch before the column, and then I'm gonna do my slip two together knit-wise, knit the next one. Now, be careful that you don't accidentally pick up this yarn over as well. Because you've wrapped and then you're knitting that next one, it does wanna slant over the top of the two stitches that you've slipped together knitwise. So just be mindful that you're only getting a hold of this when you're slipping it over and you know you're not grabbing your yarn over as well. Ask me how I know. <laughs> okay, so you've done your central double decrease right in line in that column, and now we're just gonna carry on with one, two, three, four, five, six yarn overs and then I should be one before the column and I am you can see the column right there and then carry on again with your central double decrease all the way across and that applies like I said to either row six or row 13. Well, I'll go ahead and finish all this up and then I'll be showing you the pico bind off. All right we're ready for the pico bind off so the first thing we're going to do according to the instructions is cast on two stitches using the knitted cast on method so you're just going to go into this first stitch as if to knit, go ahead and knit that stitch, pull it through, and then turn your right needle away and then go back into the stitch that's on your right needle from the front. And then you're just putting that back on there. Okay. Again, go, and you're just going to do this two times. So you'll go in as if to knit, wrap counterclockwise just like normal, bring that stitch through, tilt your right needle away, and then put the left needle back into the front of that stitch. Okay, so you've cast on two stitches, and then we're just gonna use the standard bind off to bind off nine. So we're just gonna knit one, knit the second, okay, then bind off one by lifting it up and over the second stitch. 
Okay, knit the third. That's the second bind off. Three, four. Okay, and after we've bound off nine, you're going to take this last stitch, move it back over to the left, tip to tip without twisting it. Then you're going to cast on two stitches more, just like we did before, where you go in, knit the first one, pull that. Give yourself a little extra slack, tip that away and put it back on the left needle from the front. Do that again, tilt that right needle away and place it back on the left needle. Okay, then we're binding off eight this time and that's what's in parentheses. We're gonna continue doing that. Continue binding off eight stitches after your two stitch knitted cast on. We're gonna continue doing that until we get to the end. So there's one, Okay, this Pico bind off will take some time, but it's well worth the extra effort because it looks really nice once it's pinned out and blocked and stretched. It looks fantastic. All right, I'm so happy you were able to join Amba and I for this mystery knit along. That wraps up clue number five. I'm sh we both look forward to seeing your finished shawls in the Facebook and Ravelry groups. All the links to the various social media groups are down below. Be sure to check that out. I'll be posting mine as soon as I get it done on my Ravelry project page, but I didn't want to hold up this, the upload of this video in order to knit through the last bit of the Pico bind off, which will take some time, but it's gonna be fantastic. And I look forward to seeing yours. Thanks for watching.